Sat Shri Akal. Last video, we discussed the three forms of systematic logic that we need to be able to convert between. We then focused on logic circuits and Boolean equations. In this video, we'll explore the connections between Boolean equations and truth tables. This has a lot of overlap with more detailed earlier videos. Look at this as a helpful summary. The procedure given here shows our approach for converting from Boolean equations into truth tables. We will build a table that has three broad sections, inputs, intermediate steps, and output. For simple equations, you may not need the intermediate section, but for even slightly complex equations, this section will help prevent mistakes. The input section needs one column for each input variable. The binary values filled into the underlying rows should follow a straight binary count. For example, with a three input equation, the rows will go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and so on all the way down to 1, 1, 1. The intermediate section is where we break down the lengthy Boolean equation into manageable steps. Perform these steps following the order of operations. For example, work out a not before an and. At the end of those steps, we obtain an output column. Let's look at this example, featuring an equation that has multiple steps. We notice the domain has three variables, a, b, and c, so we list those under the input columns. The binary codes underneath follow a straight count. Maybe you can, but I certainly can. not Jump straight from those inputs to write down the correct output values. So I break down the equation into individual steps. I decided to first have an a complemented column. Simple enough. Every time input a equals zero, then a prime equals one. Every time a equals one, then a prime equals zero. Next, I evaluate a or b before ending with c. When looking at this step, I can ignore the c column and the a prime column, which lets me focus on just the terms that matter in this step. Anytime either a or b equals 1, then this column is a 1. Next step is to and the a or b term with c. So I cross out these other columns to visually leave just column a or b and column c. The product of these two is true only when both the input columns are true. Only the final OR operation remains, which will tell us the values for output x. Here, there are two big terms being ORed, a prime, this column, and a or b and c, this column. Again, any time either of these columns is a 1, then the output column is a 1. There is no single step in this procedure that is especially difficult. The real challenge is maintaining focus and properly writing down every single one and zero. So be patient and work through these tables one cell at a time. Now let's work in the other direction. Given a truth table, find the Boolean equation. The first step of this procedure is to identify the desired final form of the equation. Recall that there are an infinite number of ways of writing an equation to express the same logic. Thankfully, there are some standard forms which we typically use, and in this course, we will primarily use the standard sum of products form. Depending on the desired form, use the table to write the canonical form of the equation. As a reminder, with SOP, focus on the ones in the truth table. In POS, focus on the zeros. Once the canonical form is written, we sometimes stop there, but more often we want to simplify. This can be done using the rules of Boolean algebra. This example shows an arbitrary three input truth table. Our goal is to write this as the simplest possible SOP equation. So we identify the rows where Q equals one and use those to write the canonical SOP equation. For example, row 001 
provides the min term x prime y prime z. Three ones lead to three min terms. From there, we simplify by applying some Boolean algebra rules. My approach is shown here. First, I factor out a z from each min term. Then, I factor out an x prime from these first two product terms. y prime or y equals 1, so this simplifies to x prime. By rule 11, x prime or x y prime equals x prime or y prime. And lastly, to get it into standard form, we distribute the z to make the equation q equals x prime z or y prime z. Quite often, we will need to convert between the various logic forms. In fact, a common design route for combinational circuits goes truth table, then equation, then circuit. Now you have the skills to do any of these conversions, which is the foundation for the more exciting part of the course building circuits that will do our bidding.